My big regret from being a youth is I didn't play enough Dungeons and Dragons. Because I used to go to clubs with my friends and, and they, they were having, I, I think they were having a good time. I was just bored out of my mind. And I think back, all those hours and hours and hours spent getting drunk and going out dancing and things, I could have spent playing Dungeons and Dragons and I would have had a much better time. I, I think a lot of people feel they have to socialise. I think a lot of people would be less social if they could get away with it, if they had something else to do, if they had something like writing that was, in, uh, or painting or, or photography or something that absorbed them. So my parents were always buying these kind of obscure Russian books or, or Czech books, now I look back on it, which always had very grim, grim tales of uh, fairy tales. But I, I have to say my most influence was is probably science fiction and fantasy that I discovered when I was about nine and pretty much continuously read until I was about 16 with no discrimination whatsoever. I just read one book after another one a day, you know, nom, 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 until I... When we started the novels in, in Britain, no one had any expectations they would be this popular. They thought there would be a nice niche mid-range science fiction writer. I was going to keep my day job and I was going to use the surplus money to pay my mortgage. That was basically my plan. The fact that they suddenly became hugely successful took everyone by surprise. It took my publishers by surprise, took my agent by surprise, took me by surprise, took my friends by surprise. Suddenly they were this huge popular book and I could give up my day job. Yes! I hate work. I'm a very, very lazy person and I really hate any kind of hard work. You're a writer, you, you spend a lot of time daydreaming and writing things down in notebooks and just coming up with ideas that you're never going to use. Right at the beginning, it's like a, an emerging planet. Once it forms a sort of core, then bits start to accrete onto it. Ha ha, hot, hot, sort of, lots of molten lava, and, and you kind of, ah, I don't know what that is, you know, and fire, oh, slowly, slowly you kind of mould it into a story. Generally speaking, characters come along, and if they're good characters, they kind of have opinions. And you write a plot and you think, well, we must go from A to B because we need to be at B for plot. And your characters will just go, no, I wouldn't do that. You're my characters. You can't say no, I'm the author, you're a character. You kind of grind to a halt. You know, they, they go on strike. They won't give you any inspiration. So in the end, you have to usually either compromise or come up with some other way of getting where you want to go. Your characters are going to have some of you in because you only have yourself to put into them. But I deliberately try to make him as not like me as possible. So he likes cars, I don't like cars. He, you know, he likes music that I don't like. The other thing is that he's like 20 years young, 30 years younger than me. So uh, he likes TV series of music that I hate just because I'm, you know, 53 and a curmudgeon. So I had to go look at all what things he'd watched. He'd had a completely different, ch watched different things for childhood. He'd, he'd grown up with computers and I didn't grow up with computers, you know, things like that. So there's no correlation between the, the writer's personality and the book they're writing because that's the whole point. That's the whole point of, their, 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 of writing, is that, that you are doing something out of yourself. It is not you. Now, you can write of yourself, but that's a different, completely kind of different thing. Okay, so you have to have a certain level of arrogance just to start writing. But beyond that, all you can do is write the book you want to write. I do the novel, and it's my responsibility, and that is the thing that the... That the, that the person reads. That's all you can do. You, you have no choice. You cannot, you know, if you try and make yourself suffer for your art, all you're just going to do is look silly. Some people, they write, you know, kind of like, like a of cloud of joy. And some people, you know, you can see the blood coming out of their eyes with every word. But it, there's no difference within the, between the kind of quality of their work, really. So you just basically do your best whatever that is, and then you hope that other people will find that interesting enough to read it.